Welcome to MotoGP Mac, where MotoGP fans congregate and fanboys fear to tread. How are you doing today, buddy? <laughs> Jesus, huh? You, I actually nearly believed you there with that one, huh? <laughs> how, how, for how many hours this week were you practicing? You know, I was going to say, where MotoGP fan go to congregate fanboys, we kick their head in. <laughs> yeah, with blunt objects. Ooh. Yeah, this has been a really, really strange week, Joe. Weekend off, no Moto GP racing mm -hmm. this weekend. Heading straight into a triple header with championship ramifications, which I'm excited about. And we'll talk a little bit about um, in a minute. But I suppose one of the things oh, I want to talk and that about, Moto P folks, I gotta say it, that Moto GP rush or forty sport of forty four or whatever. I want to go and light the place on fire. It, they, I, I have you as your good fans, and you have we have a good set of fans here. I hate to see people go over there, and it's such bullshit. Oh, they're committing fraud now, you know, and it, it's just unbelievable. It, it, mm -hmm. I just can't get into it how much crap the guy's flinging. Why YouTube doesn't throw him off, I don't know. And I'll have like 39,000 views, you know, it, it's just. And it's all the same guy. Yeah. Ah, look. It you doesn't know, bother Mac. Me, it bothers. I hate to see you guys get lied to. Yes, yeah, it 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 does bother me quite a lot. But look, I've I've learned that you know there's not much you can do. I only report them every time. But uh, yeah. Anyway, more interesting news than wasting time airtime talking about those people yeah. is. Gigi has come out and give more insight into the engine regs for 2020. Oh, that made me sad. Dumbest mm. thing I ever walked. Mm. Do you remember that? Them days of the 800 CCs? Jesus mm -hmm. Christ. So apparently, um, there's three and a half teams that are agreed in, <laughs> in it. Um, I think Ducati is definitely one of them. Uh, I think. Um, I think Prilia are against it. They Worst want. Reason. They want. They want to increase the bore and keep the thousand cc, but increase the bore. Uh, KTM are kind of on board with it, uh, but not really. So, basically, they want to limit it to eight hundred and fifty cc's. Dumb as rock. That was the same thing. The board was bigger before, remember? Mm -hmm. And it, 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 the only thing it did was cost money, and it made it more dangerous. Because what happens is, instead of trying to make it's safer to try to make a pass or make up time on a straight than it is a corner. Okay, you're defeating the whole purpose. True. Look, I don't know. I, I, I think it's quite interesting. Uh, look, now this is very, very high level. Do you know what I mean? It's very, mm -hmm. very high level. Um, where where it is right now but i think it's interesting that they're going back down that now now pit Byra says that it, it is um that it could be probably a new thing but there is also um the budget cap coming in and there's also negotiations on no negotiations underway to eliminate Sorry, to eliminate devices and limit winglet sizes. Oh. Nothing really that we didn't know, but yeah. It'd be interesting uh, to see another going. Look, we remember uh -huh. Steve we had on here, the engineer, and the what was Steve's oh. last name? Steve, the one we, we missed the um it, it didn't air. Oh, um, what's his name? Uh I think about him in a second. He's a legend, right? And he's an engineer. Yeah. He's a doctor or a master's degree in, in, in engineering. And what did he say? Craig, Craig he's, Scarborough. Yeah, we need more engineering and more tech, not less. If you want to make Ooh. it safer, you need more, not less. You know, that's just... Say that, yeah, yeah. Look, I think... Yeah. I think this is where... I, I don't know. I don't know, but I, like, if they go 850 cc... Um. Uh, yeah, it, it, I don't. I I think it's interesting how they're how they're going to 
sell the idea. Look, and look, it's still in in conversation with the MSMA anyway. So uh, we we'll have to wait. You know what this sounds like? And you might think it's a conspiracy theory, but it sounds like they're trying to make it cost as much as possible to, to make Ooh. it hard for a small small company. Yeah. That's a, that so, has Han, yeah, it, it, has it, Han it, and Yama written all over it. It doesn't, it doesn't, because Gigi is the one that's driving it. Yeah, oh, well, Gigi, I could see him. He he's so far ahead of tech. You know, what I mean, his his tech team he, so good. He 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 probably already has a fucking working engine. Yeah, ready for yeah. It, it is mind going. Yeah, I can exploit the rules here and here, here and here. Right. Um, yeah. So look, it was thought it was quite quite an interesting topic that that they put out there. Um, now Honda, who will Joe take Mark Marquez's place? Um. I kind of thought it was nearly a done deal for. I thought Richie. it was a done deal, yeah. Now I'm hearing that um, Furman Algegar from Moto Two, really, is, is 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 a possibility name. They tried to talk about Marini, <laughs> and Pooch tried to talk to Marini at Thailand, but Marini doesn't have an ex escape clause from his VR46 contract. It's really kind of a um, a pick, I suppose. Who would you put on there? Sorry, I'm drinking a lot of water lately. It's just I'm trying to numb my tooth without taking painkillers to get me stoned. Yeah. Um, I so, yeah. like a wet, wounded, wounded warrior, really. He has a toothache, and I got uh, golf stones or uh, kidney stones. It's not literally like the size of a golf ball. In golf balls instead of kidney stones. Anyway, I finally yeah. figured out what the hell was wrong with me. After how you guys like, how do they miss that? There's like, no just, fucking medical science in this world, Jake, will ever figure out what the fuck is wrong with you. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, I don't know. That's a fucking mood. Yeah, that's a case. Get, get rid of it. Um, yeah, but I find it very interesting that uh, it's not a done deal, and it tells me that they're struggling to find the right caliber. Now, I still think that they're 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 right going with someone young, hungry, so willing to crash. Yeah, you know, makes a lot of sense. It actually makes sense. I don't want to say for a Honda fan, I wouldn't want to see another alien. That'll step that'll actually put them back. If if they have Joe Average Rider, now they're forced to say, we have to make a better bike. This will give them a better judge. This will give them a, 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 a real um caliber of, of the bike in itself. I think so too. I think you know. And it gives them an out to blame the rider rather than the the car, Joe, Joe to be like if they turn around and they try to blame Mark or Fabio or one of these they're like if the whole world's going to turn around and go you're full of shit like Joe yeah. these are fucking excellent riders <laughs> you know yes. where they where they couldn't um, yeah so they couldn't really so I think I think it kind of gives them an out the other thing I was talk about is the situation that if Martin wins the championship will he go to the factory team why not i say it yep i would and nini and i and i should not complain if he gets put down after the, if he gets if he gets put down to the grassini team after the year he's had or the primac team after the year he's had mm. i was thinking this too right but then i was reading an article there <laughs> And I love. I have to. I have to admit, I absolutely love uh, Carlos Perna. Right, he is Bastianini's manager, and he's like, "Well, they reconfirmed him. You know, they've signed the sponsors based on him being in that team and him being in that team. You know, and realistically, if they wanted to try and do this, it would cost them a hell of a lot of money." <laughs> <laughs> it's just a pure it's a pure italian manager and I think okay well yeah, 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 if you want to do it you know okay fine well then we need it it's going to cost you lots and lots of which he doesn't have the best uh relationship anyway with with uh with ducati so i think it would be i think it the, be it's not like ducati it. has the big box either you know I'm not saying they're poor but they're they don't have the honda well, yamaha you know yeah, yeah, they 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 don't or they KTM don't have money. Huh? or KTM money, or KTM money. KTM is some amount of money, especially as a like today's video is about uh, 
Um, Pit Boyer giving insight into will he bring MV Augusta into it? He, he, he said he probably will, but it would be after the 2026 2027 regulations. I told you, I told you on that one. I was too much PR value to let you sit there and go to waste. Yeah, but he did mention within it, like he does realize that MV Augusta is now a a luxury brand rather luxury than a recent right. brand. So, yeah, look, I think it think it'll be, I think it'll be good. Now, hey, I know something that's affected the, the, the pop. Watch yourself what might affect the, uh, the brand. Um, look at um, uh, Ducati going to the motocross. Mm. That could be a I killer. Like, you know, that you're not thinking that. about it, you know? Yeah, I saw that. I saw that. Um, actually, I thought it was quite interesting. You know, would I buy one? Probably not. But, um, yeah, the a yeah. powerful single cylinder engine. But mm -hmm. it does not necessarily mean that it's going to win, and not in dirt, not in not in motocross. Well, they're approaching it the way they're approaching uh, the approach MotoGP. When they came in there, they only cared about the engine. They didn't fucking shit about anything else. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And they they learnt over time, and that kind of worked for them, I suppose. <laughs> when you look at yeah. it now, do you know what I mean? You're they don't even, they don't even sell a, a. They don't. They're like KTM. They don't even sell a, a dirt bike. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, but would would you buy? Would you? Well, sorry, a lot of people would just go buy one to have. Do you know what I mean? The yeah, I would do. Yeah, so, yeah. Somebody just buy one and then just look at it. Yeah, it's pretty in the corner. Yeah, you know, <laughs> so wave at it every time you pass. Yeah. Um, you don't know how many bikes I've had just to watch them. You know what I mean? My yeah. roar, I had that bike, and that was that was the supercharged one. I didn't put my miles on that thing, and now it's in the museum, the Barber Museum, the supercharged American um, sport bike. Wilson, man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Man. <laughs> that thing was that superb bike. That's the best bike ever came out of the United States, sport bike by far. I, I read a um a, a title during the week, and I was like. Joan Mir breaks down his wish list for 2024 Repsol Honda team lead, teammate. And I, 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 when I read initially read that, I read it wrong. It was like, you know, he breaks down his wish list for the Repsol Honda 2024. It was like, stay on the bike. Number one, stay on the bike. <laughs> <laughs> so it was just like, and then I were a teammate. Like, ah, okay. Wait, but, shopping list. <laughs> yeah, Super shopping cool. list. Like, yeah. <laughs> I, stay on the bike, feel the front yeah. end, you know. Yeah. Blue ass to feet. <laughs> so get inside the top ten. <laughs> uh, but I think, yeah, I, I, I it kind of got me thinking then about John Muir. Like it's like it's a very sorry state of where he is right now. It's freaky, freaky. Like I remember Jack Miller when he was in Grassini with. Um, with Cal Crutchlow and he was talking to Crutchlow and he's like, before the race, he's like, I'm so going to go down. I'm so going to crash. Do you know what I mean today? Mm -hmm. I must be a fucking sinking feeling going out to go for a race, knowing that you're yes. going to crash. Mm. But, uh, yeah. Um, Polo Spagro, I suppose, this is a really, 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 really uh, um weird one that he's come out and he's he's kind of blasted ktm management for how they've handled the whole yeah writer thing so yeah i just thought it was pretty weird that like you know he's still technically a current writer and right. given him wild cards and all these opportunities next year but then he's kind of come out and said you know well they didn't really fucking handle it right hmm. i think that being that his age and how long he's been in there, okay, I mm. don't, can't see a problem with it. You know? Yeah, but I think, I I, I personally think uh, that KTM got a bit too cocky and like, oh yeah, we're definitely going to get these these things, you know, and if we have, if oh, we have five yeah. riders, you know, five riders signed up, you know, then it's kind of a bargaining tool for us. But, I don't know. I just, you know, and I know people were saying, "Oh, no, in comments, that they didn't think that they were getting too cocky." And I was like, 
they were because they knew that they had four confirmed seats, right? They brought a um, what is it, what's the name Acosta up. At that time, right, they had their four riders for next year because Augusto's contract wasn't signed for 2024. They only mm-hmm. confirmed Augusto after Pedro or after Acosta. So for me, when I look at it, like, yeah, they, they got very over cocky because they signed five riders knowing they'd only four seats and someone was always going to lose out. And was it is it just their way of getting rid of Paul Spagro? I don't know. I think I I, I bet I I bet my bottom dollar is that doing what it's told them. Uh, we, well, maybe don't worry about it. Kind of blew smoke halfway up their ass. I, I had a feeling they did that. You know, Ooh. that it's with, with Dorna's track history. But I'll tell you what, as soon as they told me about that, I had visions in my mind of every time, now every time Dorna goes to KTM and wants something, they're going to be pricks and go, Oh, really? You want something? Hey, Gigi, what do you think about it? Oh, well, I'll tell, whatever Gigi wants, I'll go with him. How's that? You yeah. 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 No, yeah. I, yeah, I think I, th- I I think KTM would be a bit difficult for Dorna to deal with because they because of this. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, uh, they're gonna follow. Of- they're gonna follow Ducati's lead just to piss Dorna off every time now. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Um, maybe they're not as big a prick as I am, but and <laughs> <laughs> um, that's some prick to be fair. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, so I no, I just look. I just thought it was a real um, interesting kind of like you would do it if you were fucked out of the team and you know you had no ride next year, but he still does have a ride with them, you know. Right. And you know, and a lot of people were talking about World Superbike. Should he go there? And I like, I don't even think he, you know, he's good enough test rider. Do you know what I mean? Danny's right. getting old. Do you know? Paul's yeah. getting old. Um, and I'll bet oh, you yeah. he got a good paycheck for it too. Ooh. Well, Danny Patrol so literally is worth his weight in gold. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> literally. literally <laughs> you know, it's not a lot of gold. Uh, but no, he is like, he's definitely worth it. So you pay his weight in gold for, for sure to to have him. But like, no, look, I just thought it was um, it was a real interesting kind of comment out of poll um, for. Yeah, like yeah, it's not it's not a comment I I be co- well I would think that someone would make within a contract. Do you know what I mean? Right, so it kind yeah. of shows you how pissed off at him. Yeah, he is. So yeah, so look, it'll be interesting to see what happens if there's any kind of follow with with Hollis back or all that. The other thing I want to talk about is this weekend we have a race in Malaysia. <laughs> So first round of the three race run into the championship. But what I'm actually really interested to see now, even though he is not my favorite rider in the world by a long shot, and I don't know, it's just some reason I cannot take to him. But we have Alvaro Bautista doing a wild card this weekend on the yep. Ducati. I think it's going to be very interesting to see how he gets on there. Yeah, I don't think he's going to do that well. He was doing he was faster than Piro. Testing yeah. the last time he tested. I never thought much of Piro. Yeah, but still, you know, if he can get within a second, you know, is he in the wrong league? That was the question that was being asked more at Superbikes last week. Well, I don't know if he's in the wrong league, but he could make a, he's a, that's another one that could make a nice test rider on the way out. He's no mm-hmm. spring chicken. He ain't no spring chicken here. You're a hundred percent right there, Nat. Uh, but no, I think it'd be interesting to see it. Malaysia is also going to be a tricky one, I think. You know, um we have like realistically Baseki has to blow the fucking doors off the boys this weekend, or else his championship is completely over, over, over. Um yeah. So, like, realistically, he has to, to. And yeah, I don't know what we Peko is gonna attempt this weekend. We know practice one, he doesn't normally doesn't go anywhere, but 
practice too i think he needs he really needs to be on it straight away do you know what i mean um and he has to qualify well but i'm not sure can he do you know what i mean mm-hmm. um martin i think martin is starting to feel the pressure he really really is starting to feel the pressure now yeah he is. I mean? yeah he um, is okay well it's always less pressure than than you're you're not the champion or that you're not um, that you're the show that you're the hunter yeah um, now everybody sees him with at least one hand on the on the on the trophy so that's the ooh. he said he is the heir apparent to that title right now in most people's minds it says the yeah, well like you, you ask mark marquez and any of them they reckon he's the man yeah you know? um so like is that piling on pressure without piling on pressure or what you know what i mean so i think i think it's quite i think it's it, it's really really um we're going to see another level that we've never seen Mar- our martin go to yet i think personally Ooh. you're talking some risky business there if you expect him to make another step up he just got he just got he just got uh you know stable at this point you know consistent yeah you're asking to make another step up okay so look when you're when you're when you're racing right and you win your first race you're like oh, right. i won my first race right then you win a couple of more races and then the pressure of the championship of yeah. okay, instead of now okay i'm winning a race <laughs> yeah i'm now winning a championship right and that kind of pressure do you know what i mean can at times be great and at times it can be fucking absolute car because when you when you battle for your, your first championship you don't understand I, I suppose what's going on around you do you know what i mean you, you're into the hype you're hyped up you're fucking psyching yourself up to vote where you probably actually need to be very calm relaxed yeah. it's an old expression point, but, most you know, people either excel when the pressure hits them or fold one of the two yeah but i i, I suppose where, where i'm going with this is like you fold you can fold but if you learn and understand how to deal with the pressure you know where your circumstances are what is going to happen to you like i think one of the best things that Peko has had for him is having a good stable mate outside of Ducati. So like yep. not not necessarily Roxy because I think I think more people like Uzio or someone who have been used to supporting a champion. Do you know what I mean? In the way right. of like here is where you go, this is what you think. Um he was obviously nervous. Like you could see it last year. He was fucking bricking it going into the championship decider last year. And then yeah. I think that's going to be the same with Martin. I think as the pressure grows, we're going to see him have to, having to go to a different level. Maybe not go faster, but how he approaches it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, oh, I, I, I misconstrued what you said. I, I thought you meant he's going to have to go faster. No, he's going to have to. It's more mental side of it now. He's going yeah, to have he to is come definitely in. going to have to keep that stability there. Yeah, you know? and like every every everyone knows, like winning your first race, the last couple of laps, you're pissing yourself with excitement. You're hearing things breaking on the bike or in the car or wherever it is that you know noises that were never there before, and now we're fucking appearing. Do you know what I mean? You're like, oh my god, and then you get across that hurdle, and now as you go on to it. You question what's going on with your um with your bike whatever and then let's just say it comes down to you know you have to finish fifth he has to finish ninth do you know what i mean how do you manage that situation and i think that will play into peko's hands this year because he, he's used it like i think Pe- where peko is now is like if your man is faster and he just lets him off and he's like okay today's not my day i'll fight another day do you know what i mean where but I can. that's that's where Peko's at now. Peko has mm. to go speed up. He has to step up in his speed, mm. right? He did that. Now he's the one who has to step up and get be a little. He does, yeah. 
he needs to change the game. And that's what I was just mentioning a while, a while ago. It's like he has to come out in FP1 and FP2, well, FP2 really, and hammer it. Like, do you know what I mean? Like he needs to start taking a little bit of the psychological advantage back off of Martin. So, and you did. I don't know what's been with him. This hasn't been that Martin has gotten, I don't think he's gotten any faster. It's like Pecco has gotten slower, hmm. right? So he has to get back it, to where he was. But in, in, it's, that can it's, be frustrating it's, too because you're going, okay, I've done this before. Why aren't I doing it again? What's he's going, definitely what's lost the confidence. Yo, he's lost the confidence from what I can see. He's lost confidence in the front end and breaking on that bike. Yeah. I was going to say, he lost that. It seems like to me he's lost the setup key. Something's missing on the setup. He's just... He's not finding it where he did before. Yeah, exactly. And these are kind of traps that he's not he's not used to. These are it, 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 at, at least you can call them uh, semi survival tracks. Well, according to Peko, yeah. these next like the the last two tracks, he was fairly strong at. So he was expecting a good performance. No, he did give a good performance, but Martin was just working. Epic also, do you know what I mean? And mm-hmm. I think that's where he's how would I say after a small bit is that Martin's level is has has massively increased. Um what we will I think I think I think Malaysia will answer an awful lot of questions. We're gonna know and understand where we are after Malaysia, if I'm very, very honest. Um because at that stage then what there was, it was 37 points per weekend, you know, not a lot of uh points available. So, one slip up, and I think this is where this is where I think Martin needs to learn to manage is like one slip up is in the championship. Do you mm-hmm. know what I mean? You know, like, how would I say if Peko goes into just say, for instance, if Peko went into a Valencia with a 15 point lead, Peko could probably manage that out. Do you know what I mean? Because he understood from last year, this is what he yeah. So It's a good amount of points, too. Yeah. So I think it's going to be interesting. But I like, I can't, I can't wait to see Bautista just to see how, how good he is because. You know, they're like there's a lot of people in in the superbike sort sort of kind of no. world saying, oh, you know, maybe he should go back to MotoGP. Is he more suited to MotoGP? Is he just too quick for for, for world superbike? Yeah, yeah. Well, don't don't, don't worry. Uh, don't don't figure that out. They'll just hammer out those. The Japanese might win. Have the, the Japanese have to win rules? Okay. Yeah. Well, look, they put them. They, what it was that they put is. Put seven kilos on the Ducati now, so yeah, and the and the RPM, they hit him with the RPMs again. So, so then I think the next they're going to chain him to the, the the start finish line. He's got he's that's got that's to drag a trailer or something, you know. Yeah, get him. Yeah, it will be interesting. Uh, it was nice to see Johnny Ray actually on the um, Yamaha. It was odd too. Mm. Well, it's odd, but it was nice to see him, you know. Yeah. And it was kind of funny, actually. It kind of got me thinking, actually, as as we're there in it, right? Because obviously Top Rack was not allowed to test the BMW due to contractual reasons. Fair enough. I get it. You know, his contract ended on the 31st, or in the 31st of December. That was a bullshit move, though, really. But those, those things do happen, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but this is what I'd be very interested to see, right? And this is because we don't know, right? Honda say they gave permission to Mark to test the Ducati. I don't think they gave him permission to, <laughs> to test the Ducati personally. I think Mark said my contract ends up on X date, which is the Sunday of Valencia. So, how do we know what who is telling the truth or who is lying? Do you know what I mean? So how do you think, and this is the only way I can figure it out, how do you think we're going to find out if it, he's still in contract with Honda until the end of the year 
and they've allowed him to test the bike or they even said it was confirmed that he's uh he's allowed to uh uh-huh. test the bike but my question is is this just hand a pr spin or is this hand no i i thing? think that yeah it, it, it it's both because what i tell you they're still they're still eating shit from uh holding rossi back mm-hmm. for yamaha all those years ago now that so like here, here, here is how i'm going to define how i would presume if mark throws his leg over that ducati and there's one even one sponsor on that bike then mark's contract is officially ended as of that day and there was no permission needed from on but they never they, they never i can't ever remember them switching uh teams and ever having a uh they do it they do if their contract is is if their contract is finished at valencia now if mark was if mark was there was no there was no, there was no sponsors with ray there was yeah what where who was on it on his leathers on the bike have a look i must be going blind i didn't see it I'm thinking back. Okay. We'll, we'll get you a free eye test. You're in the senior. Yeah, I, I, area, I remember yeah, yeah. it looked so stark when I saw it. You know, yeah, it, it it's black. Like, it looked... But you can see, you can see Pata written clearly on the bike. And on I, the I saw. I remember seeing Yamaha across the back. It's back in huge letters, right? And yeah. that was it. Right? That's all I saw. Yeah, no, no, there was Pata and everything. Now, there's also one other thing that I really want to talk about. So, on Friday. Today is Sunday. So on Friday, on my way home in the car, I was in traffic. I wasn't driving. Um, and I just happened, because rarely do I go onto my own YouTube channel and check numbers and whatever. And on Friday, I'm not sure if you can see this now. That, can you see it? No, ninety-nine. No, ninety-nine something. So it's, it's nine thousand nine hundred and ninety-two. Oh God! <laughs> Come on, folks. I can only stuff the ballot boxes so much. <laughs> my politics days. So, this morning I just said, ah, I'll have, not have an old look." But you know, you, you know yourself. So, did we get one or two more, maybe? And the answer is no we got a few more and we're now currently sitting on 10,019. Oh, cool. So what are we going to give them? I don't know, because I wasn't expecting this for another week or two, two <laughs> maybe three. So they cut us with their pants then. So I think what I'm actually just going to do, right, and I think this is the only fair way, is that I can see a lot of subscribers that have their subscription visibility on and what i'm just going to do is i'm going to take down all of those subscribers put them in a hat and pull it in and we give them a price <laughs> so it could be it could be the very very first subscriber or it could be the very very last or you could give it to me so it would just go around <laughs> that's it i, I can actually <laughs> i know yeah i think actually you 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 subscribed in the february that the channel was was launched. yeah that was really i was one of the first it was like 300 people on or something again like yeah yeah so it was the february so yeah finally i was kind of the other day, then like i was thinking then again i was out in the care and uh it's like what do we do now hmm? kind of it's kind of a, a goal achieved isn't it yeah it's crazy we didn't think we were gonna hit 500. Ever no, man, I, and it's it's kind of funny when it because so the, the first video that I ever did, right? I was fucking so excited about this. Like I mean fucking so excited. But also I'm uh, gonna do it. And I think in my first week I got five views. <laughs> I, was fu- I was fucking disgusted. I was just like, oh my god, oh my and then and it was actually Joe. It was actually it was my own fault. I, I way overthought what what I was doing in the video. We and, have over crashes in numbers. You know that? Hmm? Our, our numbers are higher than crashes. I don't think they are. I think I think I think crash. Um, yeah. Look, 
I I stopped looking at other people's mm. content and, and, and channels, being very, very honest, just because it was just driving myself fucking demented. Yeah, um, we have real numbers. We didn't but we didn't bugger them or, or buy them or anything like that. No, and that's like that's the like the, that's one of the things that I, I suppose I'm most proud of is like if a video did good, it did good. And if it did shit, it did shit. And there was no uh, nothing about it. Do you know what I mean? It, it'll do what it'll do. And uh, I use data to learn. Yeah, and we could have had more we could have had more members. We could have had more mm -hmm. members. We we gave the boot to the few guys just being jackasses, you know. We could have, but we could have also. I could also sold out and started writing. Oh yeah, BS and yeah. bullshit bullshit titles and this that and the other, and, and I didn't just to get clicks and. That. But yeah, so it's play kind of both sides of the fence. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So, lefty oh. to have a few beers. Yeah. Did you see? I want to bring up one. Not to cut you short. One thing that got under my nerves this week was, and a couple uh, members asked me what I thought about it, was um, Casey Stoner. Did you hear him spouting off? Now, you got to realize, folks, that Casey Stoner, what he worked, how long did he work for Tonda? Two years, right after he stopped with them. And yeah. then he had to have a job as a buyer's coach, right? They turned him down. Ever since they turned him down, he has been the biggest prick in the world. Did you notice he is like they he, he accused Ducati of cheating? He tells them, <clears throat> everything they, they can't do anything right, can't do it fast enough. And now he's gone. Now that the now he's against uh, Marquez, he's gone. Marquez should have stayed with him. They should not have any um, uh, arrow. He should have stayed with Honda because he could have worked out. I could have done it. He goes, I could have. Make it work with without arrow or, or you know made the Honda work. Like oh, you haven't ridden in fifteen years or come godly and how long has it been? The decade. No, you never had arrow and it's still the so like win. Yeah, get the hell out of here. Your ego was a hell of a rider. To be fair to him, right? he was a yeah. hell of a rider, but, but he, he was, was not, weak. But he was he not. Was he, did, he did honestly. If you push came to shove, if you noticed the right, um, uh, Rossi was faster. Uh, Marquez would have definitely had more raw speed, um, and he's he's what he's going to leapfrog over everybody as he's sitting there at his seat. You know, he's been so spiteful ever since they turned him down. So, yeah. So Stone for me, I think he was a hell of a rider on track. If I'm very honest, right? Hell of yeah. a rider on track. Yeah, I'll give you that. But, but he never, ever, ever won people. You know, and it yeah. was just, uh, and I think that's where his problem lies. So anything that he comes across and says is automatically taken as a negative from from people, right? And I remember reading what he was saying about the Honda, and he was saying the Honda is not that bad of a base bike. Do you know what I mean? It's definitely fixable. And he just said he believed that Mercedes should stay with Honda. Now, he also said he could win on it. He could, we could win on it. Let somebody else tap something onto it. The statement, yeah, which well, that's, that, that, that's a writer. Like a writer will always believe, yeah, give it to me, I'll fucking fix it. Do you know what I mean? Look at Valentino going to Ducati, yeah, we fix this. And fuck it. No, I know, I know. <laughs> 15 minutes, yeah, 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 yeah. Fucking couldn't, um, you know. So, look for me when I when I, when I, I take it like a pinch of salt, you know. And, there is a lot of negativity that surrounds, even if Casey's trying to be in a positive mood and, and, and give positive reassurance out there. It's never really taken up. It's, same, it's kind of the same as Jorge. Do you know what I mean? Jorge Lorenzo. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, a lot of stuff. Joe. It's it's kind of funny that he was he was a, like a sub icon, if, if you know what I mean. And I, and I think that so if you I look think. at so if you look at Giacomo Agostini, comes into the room, doesn't even need to open his mouth, but he already has the room's attention. Yeah, so it's, like, it's, like, it's, like, it's like yeah, it's like, oh my god, it's terrible. Do you know what I mean? Everyone's like, you know I mean? everyone's hanging on every word that he said. Stoner and Lorenzo don't don't really have that. Do you know what I mean? Right, um, right. So it's just 
I know it's just something very, very weird. And like Rossi comes into the room. Rossi has that. I don't know what is it. What, what would you call it? Charisma. Charisma or presence. Do you know what I mean? It was yeah, just yeah. like, um, like I remember watching Giacomo Agostini, right? Uh, uh, and he was talking to Susie from BT Sports about something, you know, and uh, like. Giacomo said something. Oh, he was like, hey, I don't know. Maybe she will come. Maybe she will not come. Who knows? You know. And it was just it was talking about a, a, a scenario or a bike or whatever. And everyone started pissing themselves, laughing that it was like that he was talking about a woman about to come or not. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? And so much so that like you wouldn't like had to be on the telly like that be like, you know. No, we're not going down that route. You know what I mean? We all know that he meant it in the clean way. You know. It was just, but it was just one of those things that you look at and I'm like, like when you look at, at Stoner, I like Stoner personally. Uh, I think he was unbelievable. Like first lap, he practice fast lap. Oh, you know yeah, yeah. Um, I'll give you that natural fast as hell. Um, he would had both a breath because he used to not even. He didn't know why he could win on the Ducati is the Ducati didn't have any feel, but it had grip. And he would just throw caution to the wind and say it's going to make it run a bend. And he, he rode into the grip. Yeah. And look, like, you know, he, he's a worthy world champion. He he did it, you know. And yeah, look, I think I think it's very easy for, and even for us, because we get shit about it as well. It's very easy to talk when you're not on the bike. Yeah, but he was just talking so much shit. Like, oh, he should have stayed. He was really talking down Marquez and and and, and Ducati and 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 you know, the, the Honda has no right to say, oh, you know, we could have done it or to this point that they've done anything right. You know, hmm. uh, it's been one screw up after the other. They're just plain weak. There's just can't get anyone else to say it. You know, I think, else? A, I think you know. I think I think though that there, there, there's just a fundamental, a fundamental disconnect, and you know, I I, I genuinely look at it in the way of um, that it's it's hard to describe, right? Like the Japanese at at this stage have have a a way of working, right? Right, and if that way. That way is clearly now gone to the boonies. You know what I mean? It's yeah. fucking, it's fifteen years old. You and know? they were the only game in town. It's always looks. It's always easy to look good when you're the only game in town. Mm. You know, Ducati came in there and had nine podiums in their first year. If they hadn't went the wrong direction and we just had stayed with a, it went with a, a, a aluminum box section chassis. Christ, it had a, you know, ten. Don't want to win ten championships himself, you know. Yeah, yeah, but look, that in hindsight is foresight. You know what I mean? Right. And like they're like again, that's where where it's bookie site. Well, the, no, the it's, it's, it's not so like it's, but it's even by the going the wrong direction, their mentality or the mentality that's now needed was still there, right? And that's what that's what I mean. It's like. They were willing to fail and fail fucking badly. Oh yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? To find the best solution. Yeah, which and, everyone and thought they used to exclude them because they, they're just the solution wasn't there, and they kept beating a dead horse. Well, but that's different than to learning. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like they were pushing, they were pushing the envelope or the agenda to to go and do this. And for me, when I look at it, you know. That was the breeding ground of of, of today's success, right? They, mm -hmm. they they did the hard yards. They learned by going the wrong way, but they also learned the new way of engineering MotoGP, which is constant evolution. Now, I was reading something where um, the likes of KTM have learned now that like they don't tend to bring five new things every weekend. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But at least two or three things every two races. Do you know what I mean? So it's kind of slowing well, down the evolution, but... Well, in KTM's case, you got to look at them and say, Christ, they held on to the uh, a steel, a steel palace chassis, you know, 
a hundred horsepower more than it was ever supposed to have, right? Mm -hmm. He just kept slow evolution was their name of their game for the longest time. This is it was shocking to me that they came out with something new, all new, all revolutionary with it with the carbon again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, look, they're so far ahead of others again. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you ever heard Honda? They're gone backwards in frame and chat and in swing arm. Like, they're both using aluminium, you know, frame and and things. So, I think it's just it's just a very 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 weird weird situation that's tied to the Japanese. And I don't know. I think I think. I think times are moving now. I think the Japanese have been made, I won't say pricks of, but pricks of, um, in the way that their method of work and understanding of engineering in the way of um, testing and development in race weekends. Like, it's very rare now you would see Ducati put something on the bike and it goes slower. Right, right. You know? At least they at least break even, you know. I mean, it doesn't go. Yeah, you know, it's a. Um, but they did. They, they, you know, Ducati got to watch themselves too, because mm. they're with leery as hell of using anything as a, a carbon because of the last burning they got right. Mm -hmm. And here goes KTM, who if they unlock the the, the mystery of carbon, right, mm -hmm. they can do the the leapfrog that was always promised and be. You know, five years ahead of everybody. I don't know though with with with, with Ducati, but I was looking at pictures of their frame again, right? And like, their frame is very, 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 very thin. thin by the way, what? It's very thin, yeah. Do you know what yeah. I mean? So I wonder, is like, is this um, frame? Or is the engine still continue to be a stressed part of the chassis? I think so, it is, without a doubt. So, Everybody else has a frame with this thick at the bottom sections, right? Mm -hmm. This is like this. Mm. Well, there's one part of it where I was looking at it, it was just by the Cardi, end of the casing. Everyone else. <laughs> but it's like five mil, like four or five mil thick. Like, do you know what I mean? I was like, yeah. fuck it, that's very, that's very, very thin. Now that could be just rounded up there or whatever, but I don't know. I think it's um, pretty interesting anyway. But uh, yeah, so Friday practice, Malaysia, who's your man? You always hit me first, you bastards. You know what? Mm -hmm. I'm going to go pack. I'm going to go. I want to go Paco. I think he's going to. I think he's, he's stuck between a rock and a hard place and he's going to. You know, hang his balls out there and go for it. I'm he's gonna go. He's gonna, try, he's gonna go like hell. Is he win it or bin it on Friday? Yeah, I don't think it's gonna be either Ducati. I think it's gonna be Bender. He's fuck out to lose and he needs to make a name for himself this weekend. You have been bouncing on Bender for a while now. Ever since that guy gave you hell. Yeah, like I no, but Bender, Bender has been knocking on the door. I'm just busting your shoes. Uh, he has been knocking on the door. Like he is very, very fast. Don't get me mm -hmm. wrong. Um, does he have the bike to get him a championship? No, hundred percent. Do you know what I mean? And you know, I've been keeping it real. So, yeah. No. Oh. Finger. Dead. Go on, yeah. Go on. Did you see? Um, off topic. It just hit me. The um, they said the problem with the 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 pro you they they pull in two times. It's been heat. The, car, the engine didn't blow up or anything, but the engine was so hot that the, the be on the bike was like a furnace, and they were passing out. The, the, the riders. Yeah, well, that's that, that's that. Raul said it, and and Maverick and Alish said it, right? But that's an inherent problem that was there for for many years, obviously, because if Raul is on the old spec or Aprilia, I don't know. It's definitely. It, I I have seen it. I have read it. You know, I personally kind of think it's more so it really is aerodynamics that it's pushing the air up into the rider, which we right. know that they shouldn't be. Uh, one degree in the rider is like half a second. So, yeah, uh, I think it's interesting, but I think 
It'll be very interesting to see what happens this weekend. Will there be more holes in the Aprilia fairings or something? To know. Mm-hmm. But anyway. Yeah. They, they, I figured Honda fix their problem. Anybody can fix it. That's it. That's it. Yeah. And on that bombshell, we will drop it for today. And uh, again, thank you to every single person that has subscribed. It means an awful lot to finally get to that milestone. And uh, yeah, we will be back again on Monday, next Monday after the Malaysian Grand Prix. Take it easy, guys. Have a good one. Enjoy.